I asked GPT-4 to build a couple of applications with Blazor WebAssembly, a calculator application, a snake game, then an app using Signal R, and then also a complete video game library with also a web API. Here are the results and make sure to watch until the end if you want to know if GPT-4 is ready to take over your job. So first the calculator application. Here you can see the prompt, please show me the code of a calculator application built with Blazor WebAssembly that looks like the Windows calculator application. And this is important to give GPT here the hint that it should look like a Windows calculator app. And this is what it does. This is the result. It says creating a full fledged calculator app requires a comprehensive implementation. However, we've got a basic implementation here and the result is amazing. It tells me, okay, this is how you can create a Blazor uh, WebAssembly application with .NET CLI. So somehow you already need to know how to do this. You need the SDK, of course. And of course, if you know how to build this with Visual Studio, this is what I did. Uh, you can do that, that as well without the CLI. But then we get some cascading style sheets. And what I did was I really just copy and pasted this. Index CSS is a bit wrong here. It is called app CSS and I did not um, replace the whole CSS. I just pasted that stuff in there. And then I really replaced the content of the index razor file. So the first thing you see when you open up the Blazor uh, application in the browser just copy and pasted the complete code here. Got a div with an input and so on, couple of buttons. And then also the code block. One thing was that it stopped here, but I can just tell GPT to continue with the continue prompt. And then we get the other functions here, little styling error here, but then it says this is a basic calculator implementation. All right, now I would say let's have a look. This is the result in Visual Studio. So again, I just added CSS here. So you see, this is the default stuff from uh, the Blazor WebAssembly template. And here then I pasted the CSS and then in the index razor, I replaced just everything. And with GPT 3.5, it worked, but the CSS was not that correct. And now please have a look. This is now the result with GPT-4. It looks like a calculator and I can say one plus two equals three times five and so on. This really does work. Isn't that great? So a couple of seconds really with a prompt and then you just copy and paste the code without any big need to understand it. And you've got your calculator application. That was great. Then I wanted to know more. What about a complete game? So the prompt was really simple. Could you please show me the complete code of a snake game built with Blazor WebAssembly? Similar stuff, requires a lot of code. It gives me or it tries to, to head me into the right direction and it totally does. It is even telling me how to create the application again. Then it is telling me what I need. So for instance, there should be a direction CS file, then a game class, the snake class, food, really interesting stuff. So if you want to create a snake game with Blazor, then it, it, it gives you a really great starting point here. You do not have to think about it uh, yourself when you want to start from scratch. These are great ideas. And then here we see initialized game components, change snake direction and so on. So this, it, it stops here, but continues with the UI. And then it tells me here, draw snake, draw food. What I already really, really loved was that it is not using the, the canvas element. It is using SVG and only using diffs here. And later then we see here handle user input with on key down and on key up events. This did not work, but as you can see here, first I wanted to know the complete code. It's nice GPT that you're telling me you, that would be a nice structure here. You need this function, but I do not want to think myself, please do everything for me. And it does. So please show me the complete code for the snake game razor file. And then here's a more complete version. And I get the code for drawing the snake, drawing the food and then also the other functions. So this is just crazy. State has changed, it's called. 
uh, with a delay of 150 milliseconds. <laughs> Love this, really. This is uh, interesting here, the uh, controls of the game. And here again, it also explains what is actually happening there. Okay, that was fine for me, but then I wanted to also have complete implementation of the game service because I do not want to do it by myself. I am a lazy coder here. So of course it gives me the complete implementations. And what I did then was I really, again, just copy and pasted everything. And then I got some errors. I'm getting the error, type of namespace could not be found. So what's happening here? Well, it looks like the namespace is missing. To resolve this issue, add a namespace declaration. Namespace should match your project name and so on. Now, of course, this is stuff. If you have a bit of experience, you can fix this by yourself, but I really wanted to, GP, to, to GPT do this for me. And uh, well, it did. All right, so then this worked, but then I got issues with the events. So on key up does not exist in the current context, for instance, and then it is telling me that uh, the case was wrong. Well, this is not true, error persists. And then it is telling me, all right, apologize for the confusion, <laughs> even apologize, it's, it's, it's really polite here. So now it starts with JS and I did not want to use JavaScript. So I asked it later, got another error regarding the game service. It was not registered and GPT forgot to tell me this, but then I wanted to know if there's another solution for the events without using the JS interop and yes, and that was amazing. You can use onkey down and onkey up event handlers directly in Blazor, but they must be attached to a focusable element. And this is where what I wanted to know from GPT here. I knew that I can make a diff focusable, for instance, if I add the tab index attribute there, but uh, I wanted to again solve this issue uh, here, or I want to chat GPT to solve this issue here for me. And this then finally did it. I lost focus still when I pressed the restart button and I will show you this in a second. But then a chat GPT again had a fix for that. So it says that uh, we should refactor this a little bit where we then focus, refocus the input element when we click somewhere else or click the restart button. And that was it for me then. And here again is the result. Here's the code. Got a game service exactly as ChatGPT wanted us to do this. We've got a snake razor file and uh, we've got the models here, the direction, the food and so on. Really just copy and paste the stuff. The only change we had to do uh, was in the snake game uh, razor or in the snake razor component. Oh yeah, I renamed it to snake.razor. Otherwise there, uh, I think they have, there was an error when I called it snake game a dot razor. But anyways, started this page is snake. So let's go there. Real quick, the .NET Web Academy starts soon. It's an online program where we cover all things .NET Web development with Blazor, Git, Azure, and more. Pretty much everything you need to know if you want to land a job in the .NET Web development world. And also the exclusive .NET Web Academy community for all your questions. And if you want to be the first to know when it opens, and if you want to get a discount, then make sure to subscribe to my newsletter or check out the link below to get a spot on the waiting list. Thank you very much. And now back to the tutorial. And this is the result. Let me just open the console. So scaling is a bit better. Maybe we could also fix that. Now let's just restart this. And now I'm pressing the arrow key, arrow keys on my keyboard. And as you can see, I can move around, eat something and we are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And now when I just uh, hit a wall here, I get this message game over restart. And now when I click this restart button, the focus was gone, of course, but now I just click there and the focus is still in uh, the invisible input component. I just love this. And this is crazy because this took me a couple of minutes uh, with a dialogue here with ChatGPT4, and it worked. I get this game here. All right, and now the next thing with Signal R again, a uh, simple prompt Can you show me the complete code for a two player tic tac toe game built with Blazor WebAssembly and Signal R? 
And of course, this is really, really complex. Can provide you, I can provide you with a high level overview of the steps and the components involved in building this game was the answer here. And this already is great. Again, if you're starting from scratch, it heads you in the right direction, tells you what you need to implement, that you need a, a hub for Signal R, the connection here with the service, and then the user interface, you could build a tic-tac-toe board component, then the tic-tac-toe component for the page and so on. Here we also see the structure of the project. This is great. And I tried to realize this exactly the way as GPT-4 is telling me here. And then I asked it, please show me the code. So this is a really, really big dialogue here. I'm asking ChatGPT to show me the code and it, it, and it always knows what I am talking about, right? So it, it gives me the names, the correct names of the classes, of the functions, and so on. So this is really great, even telling me here that I have to install the NuGet package, and so on. And as you can see, it was a lot. Big, big dialogue because I, uh, I got some issues, unfortunately. Lots and lots of errors in the end. And that's why I cannot show you the, the finished product here because in the end there, it, it just took too much time. I think it was an hour where I was uh, talking to GPT, copy and pasting stuff, trying to fix the errors with GPT and I couldn't get there. But still what it does is when we have a look at the code, let me, let me just scroll further down where I then stopped. You see lots and lots of dialogue. Yeah, little CSS for the buttons here because the result then looked like this. Let me just run this. Here we are, tic-tac-toe page. I can enter an ID, let's call this Patrick for instance, join game. And then you see there are the buttons, right? So I tried to fix this with some styling, but I couldn't get it to work with, again, just asking chat GPT. I uh, could join with another player, of course, but the messages did not really work and this is where I then stopped. But again, what I really love is just have a look at how much GPT already gives you, right? So much code, so many ideas, how to start, how to move on with Signal R. So if you wanna learn this, you can get really, really far just with asking GPT and maybe additionally Googling a little bit yourself. So this was still, I think, a, a great result. And this also showed me that it could not take over our jobs for now. Still, I wanted to know more. So I asked GPT-4 to create an ASP.NET Core hosted Blazor WebAssembly app using also best practices like solid repository pattern and so on. And this is what it did. It's again, telling me the steps. Then here for the server, I've got the uh, video game class already adds entity framework here with the DB context and the uh, proper DB set for our video games table. We get an interface for the repository. This is already great for all the CRUD operations. So actually pretty good stuff here. And of course, again, some comments implement CRUD endpoints here. And this is where I also stopped then because I knew that I could ask GPT to give me the complete code and it would do that. What is a bit wrong here is that it is still using a startup CS for .NET 7. Nowadays, we would only use a program CS. You can do it that way. It is not really wrong, but not really up to date. But again, if you have a little bit of knowledge, then you can fix this real quick by yourself. Then we've got the video game service. Here then the program CS to register the service. Here I would again uh, use dependency injection actually, so we could fix that. But then again, you can ask GPT-4 to do that and it will fix this and refactor this for you. And now here I wanted to continue with the UI and this is what it does then. It gives me um, the, the code block here and this could also be done when you ask ChatGPT. It would give you the complete HTML with all the inputs and um, the uh, the buttons. Here you can see it. I asked it here. Please show me the complete code of the video game Razor. Then we get the more complete version uh, with the buttons to start the edit, delete a game, and so on. So lots and lots of code. You could, in essence, copy paste 
and then you would get a great start for your video game library. But to summarize the current state, it is a great tool still. It is a better tool than ChatGPT 3.5, but in my opinion, it is still a tool. So you need to know the right prompts. You need to also know a little bit of the stuff that GPT is doing here and of the stuff you want to do, you want to implement, you want to realize. But then again, it can help you a lot with getting to the right idea faster than maybe if you would try to build something from scratch by yourself. Now, what do you think? Please tell me that in the comments. And if you have any ideas of an application that you want me to try to build with GPT-4, please tell me that in the comments as well. Would really appreciate that. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.